Hi friends, welcome back. Question for you, are robots the next big thing? Uh, and can Apple dominate this category? As you know, Tesla is in the early developments of their humanoid robot, uh, the Optimus, and uh, we'll see if Apple does indeed jump on board. Uh, there's some rumors slash leaks coming out from Apple. I wanna go over this, this is from Bloomberg. Uh, and it's actually really quite interesting and um, we're gonna go to the details of this. Uh, this is the headline, uh, Apple explores home robotics as potential, quote, next big thing after car fizzles. And uh, if you guys have been following the story, you'll know that Apple was developing an EV. Um, this was actually a long winning story. They were looking for a manufacturer to partner with. There was rumors that it was gonna be Porsche. There was actually rumors it was gonna be one of the key Korean manufacturers here in, in Korea. I had friends um, that work in the automotive industry. And so I had heard that basically Apple wanted too much money and uh, the deal was, was off. Um, you know, so who knows what, what's gonna you know happen with the car thing, if they're gonna completely abandon it forever or they'll ever go back to it. However, um, they do need a next big thing. Uh, I was looking at the stock here. Uh, in the past year, actually, Apple stock has been flat. You guys can see it. Uh, it's up like, you know, 2.43%, but it's basically flat and it's been on a downward trajectory. Uh, moreover, what's going on with Apple as well is um, they're dealing with uh, possible monopoly problems. Uh, I believe the DOJ has uh, filed suit against them. Um, there's also an interview that just came out, which I highly recommend. Um, I actually uh, shared my thoughts on it. It was with John Stewart and the FTC, Lena Khan. Uh, the basic gist of it was that Apple um, wanted to ban said interview, uh, not have John Stewart talk about it. So he switched platforms because he used to be on Apple and then um, was able to interview her. And, and it's actually a really important interview. So again, you can hear my thoughts on it and also I encourage you to watch it for yourself. Um, regarding you know what's Apple uh, robot could look like, um, I personally think it's probably not gonna be a humanoid robot like with Tesla and the Optimus thing. I don't think it's gonna go that way. Uh, when you say human robotics, it's probably gonna be closer like a toy, like this kind of thing. Uh, moreover, um, Amazon did this Astro robot thing, if you guys remember this. Um, I, I remember hearing about it. I don't know if anyone you know was out buying these things. Um, it's kind of like, um, how can I say, like a, a personal assistant that follows you around and you can ask it questions, you know, what's the weather, what's my cooking, show me certain things. It's like a mobile uh, iPad-y kind of thing. Um, when I when I was looking at this also too, I thought it was uh, cute, uh, but do I wanna spend, you know, $1,000 on this thing? Probably not. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, full disclosure guys, I'm not completely against robots. Um, this is a, a game changer in this household is the robot vacuum. Um, we've had a couple of these things. Um, we had one in USA. We also now have one in Korea. Um, there are multiple brands in this category. And if Apple were to come out with some sort of vacuum, you know, that integrates with your iPhone, you know, like really, really well or whatever, um, you know, maybe that would be a thing for them. But um, they're, they're actually looking to, to do more. And I wanted to show you guys um, some details of this stuff. Also, too, I want to talk about the stock a bit um, regarding growth. Again, this is why they're, you know, going into robots, you know, and, and they're just trying to find a new product category. Um, it, this is their revenue growth was this year, a negative 0.47, not so great. Forward revenue growth, maybe 1.52. I mean, you can see it, the numbers are just, the growth isn't there anymore. Um, if you want to look at their valuation, um, they're also just not at a crazy good valuation, meaning that um, how what we're pricing the stock at isn't great relative to its growth. Uh, moreover, take a look at this chart. Um, this is like their different product categories, when they were started and how big it is at the company. So you got the Mac, the iPad, the Apple Watch, and the AirPods, right? So respectively, the Mac, the iPad, the Apple Watch, and the AirPods, they're all kind of the same in terms of how much you know money it generates for Apple. Uh, when you take a look at the iPhone here, I mean, it is like by far um, the biggest product category for them. And obviously, if you're a company like Apple and, and you're trying to you know convince people to uh, invest in your company and, and please the shareholders, et cetera, you're trying to come up with like, hey, well, you know, we're coming up with something else. Uh, would the robot be a thing? And, and that's sort of the, the subject of these days video. Um, so let's take a look at some of the details of this stuff. Um, what are we talking about here? It says here, uh, Apple has teams investigating into personal robotics, a field with potential to become one of the company's ever shifting next big things, according to people familiar with the situation. And um, I'm just thinking into my head when we're talking about next big things. Um, if you remember recently, Apple did the uh, Apple goggle thing, the Vision Pro. Um, I personally don't think that's going to be it. I, I just don't want to wear goggles. Now, other people um, are, are really bullish on that kind of technology. Uh, I think there are uses for that stuff. Um, I think right now, though, the price point is like $3,500. <laughs> There's just not enough you know, uh, people out there who are willing to pay for that uh, or even able to. Because like even now, the phone's at $1,000. You know, it's pretty spendy. Uh, it's, it's crazy that, that, that that's part of our daily lives now is it's like, hey, 
I got to have that thousand dollar phone that I could br- uh, break at any moment and crack the screen, etc. Um, but uh, they convinced us to buy it. I have one. <laughs> I'm sure you have one also. Um, so, you know, theoretically, are the goggles eventually going to get to that kind of category we all have? Um, one thing that did, um, I won't say fail, I'll just say is not as big as the iPhone would be something like the Apple Watch. Um, I don't even know how much those things cost. I just don't want one. I, it doesn't matter. The, for me, that's not cost or anything. I just don't really want to wear a watch. Now, theoretically, if they came up with like a really cool um, phone that was kind of, I, I don't know, wasn't a watch, but I could like kind of wear it in a way. <laughs> I'm just, you know, talking with you about wearables like um, like a, like a, like an Apple glasses I would be interested in, which would be different than than goggles, like a smaller, lighter weight thing, or like more like, let's say, Apple bracelet, theoretically, with hologram stuff. I'm talking get more sci-fi things, but I'm just saying, like, if Apple's looking for the next big thing, what's it going to be? Uh, could be robots, right? Um, the, fun, the funny thing is is that they're uh, codenaming this thing, and I'll read it to you guys. Uh, it's Skunk Works. <laughs> it's like, who comes up with these names? Uh, Apple's engineers at Apple have been exploring a mobile robot that could follow uh, users around their homes, said the people uh, who asked not to be identified because the, quote, a skunk works project is private it's like why why are you renaming it skunk works like it totally smells i guess i don't know um the iphone maker also has developed an advanced tabletop home device they use robotics to move a display around so looks like they're, they're talking about a couple different things right so one is something that follows people around their homes and another one is tabletop home device that uh uses a robotics to move a display around now to be fair to apple one of the things that, uh, that my wife does a lot is um she likes to have her phone uh and just play it while we're cooking or play it while you know uh in the shower that kind of stuff or you know play it when you're like gardening or whatever like like the point is like it's kind of like your companion that you listen to youtube videos that's what she watches <laughs> while she's doing something else and, and you guys are probably doing the same thing so you know theoretically uh th- there there could be this concept of like a, essentially a mobile again a mobile ipad kind of thing so I, I could see that kind of thing happening whether or not we would all need that opposed to just literally carrying your phone and placing it next to you um, you know i'll let you guys be the judge of that um this is also says here uh, though the efforts are still in the beginning stages it's unclear if the products will ultimately be released right so they could cancel it um, with robotics apple could gain a bigger foothold in consumer homes and capitalize on advanced uh, advances in artificial intelligence uh, moreover let's read some more of this stuff it says the robotics work is happening within Apple's hardware engineering division because you kind of want to know like how much you know assets and, and resources they're putting towards this thing, and it's also part of its uh, AI machine learning group. Now we know that AI has been all the rage, um, and so again, like, can you integrate this sort of like rage in AI and get people to buy robots? Um, it's also hard to do these kind of things um, in a down economy when the money isn't necessarily flowing and people are more concerned about paying for food, fuel, and energy. These kind of things like do we need to you know buy a robot that's going to consume yet more energy uh who knows um also too this is kind of interesting when it says um apple investors reacted coolly to the news meaning that it didn't really move the bar uh, with the stock pairing earlier gains after bloomberg reported on the robotics work uh, it was up less than one percent at close and uh shares of roomba maker irobot uh, meanwhile briefly jumped as much as 17 percent. so that was kind of the thing that um that that i mentioned before earlier on is like would apple just buy a company now my understanding with the the roomba thing um and, and i robot i think i think it was amazon was trying to buy like this kind of company and it got blocked in the u i think it was something like that and and these are the kind of things that you have to worry about when you're you know a company like apple and i mentioned the ftc issue is as instead of developing your own products and when you're just essentially as lena khan said in the interview buying your biggest competitor then you're getting into monopoly problems so um, we'll see if, if they end up just buying another company or developing something they own. Um, also, too, so and this is our crazy stock market where, you know, rumor comes out that Apple's looking to get in robotics and something's like, oh, it could be iRobot. They're going to buy. You know, there's, there's, not, there's nothing that really says that uh, here. Um, more of it says here, uh, the tabletop robotics project, and that's kind of interesting. So it goes on top of your table or kitchen counter or whatever. Um, the tabletop robotics project first uh, excited senior Apple executives a few years ago including hardware engineering chief uh, John Turnus and members of the industrial design team. The idea was to have the display mimic the head movements, such as nodding uh, of a person on a FaceTime session. It would also have features to precisely lock in on the single person among a crowd during a video call. So, you know, it's funny, it, it, it's kind of sci-fi. And not that we don't have the technology, but just we've, we've seen these kind of things in, in you know, sci-fi shows where you have like this screen running around with like say hey it's a phone call for you and you know the robot follows you and then the screen turns on and you talk to your friends so 
it, it's not out of the realm of possibility. It's just like, do we need this thing and do we want to spend money on, on said thing? Um, more of it says here, uh, but the company has been concerned about whether consumers would be willing to pay top dollar for said device. Yeah, they're, they're, they're thinking the same lines that I'm thinking of. Like, do people want to pay money for said thing? Also, too, there have been technical challenges related to balancing the weight of the robotic motor on at such a small stand, right? So you have the do people want to pay for money for it? And then physically, like, can you get it to work? And um, if you think about it, like, like I'm just talking out loud with you, you know, iPads, you know, fairly heavy in terms of like the footprint they would take to place said iPad on a base of a vehicle that would be, you know, mobile, stable, fast, etc. It, it just gets to be too bulky. And then essentially uh, what you're having is like, you know, uh, a really big toaster on your <laughs> on your kitchen counter. Like how much room would you have on there? Uh, and, and like if, you, if you're not going to use an iPad and you want to put this thing on your kitchen table or wherever you're going to put it, I, I did yeah, now that I'm talking about it out loud with you, I, I don't know. I'm not seeing it because I can literally just pick up my iPad or phone right now, you know, hold it or place it, you know, in front of me and just talk to person that way or use a laptop, et cetera. So, like, why do I need uh, a mobile laptop to do something? Yeah, now I'm, now I'm talking about it out loud. Um, the only really advantage to me, again, is if you want something hands-free, which I mentioned the cooking example before. Uh, or you're in the shower, but I don't know how many people do phone calls in the shower or bathtub or whatever. Uh, yeah, it, okay. It's a, I'm, t I'm talking myself out of Apple's thing now <laughs> before we go through this. All right, here's some more. Um, a car had the potential to add hundreds of billions of dollars to Apple's revenue in part because the vehicles were expected to sell roughly 100,000 a pop. So, you know, they, they tried that, but um, no, no dice. Here's the other stuff that they've been talking about. Um, a few other products have that kind of growth potential. Um, but Apple has a number of projects in the works, including an updated Vision Pro, so that they definitely will probably do that. So it's basically a cheaper version of the Vision Pro. Touchscreen Max. Um, so my understanding is that Steve Jobs was always against uh, the touchscreen iMac. Um, that's basically the iMac's their desktop, if you guys aren't familiar with it. And then um, I'm not sure how he felt about the touchscreen MacBook. Um, companies out there try to combine the uh, tablet with the notebook experience, right? So you, you basically tear off the, the screen and have a touchscreen kind of thing. Um, I think those are more plausible, uh, be it a touchscreen MacBook, um, but it, essentially it's just an iPad, like iPad again. It's it's not like the difference between an iPad and, and then a touchscreen MacBook is probably very negligible. Um, maybe just the operating system is going to be different, et cetera. So I, you know, who knows if they're going to develop this? And, and I, you couldn't convince me to buy a touchscreen MacBook when I can already buy an iPad that I already don't want. <laughs> I, I I I have a MacBook just full school and I'm happy with it. I don't necessarily need touch. But some people do like that stuff. But if you do, just get the iPad. So the, and this is where the touchscreen iMac, I don't think is a, is a, I think it's a non-starter. Because Jobs was saying, and I, I would agree, and I remember when he was live, was like, people don't really want to hold their arm out in front of them to be, you know, playing on their screen. Also, too, they're talking about other things that you could be doing. iPods with built-in cameras. That could theoretically be a thing. But, um, you know, I, I don't even know what iPod. I actually have iPods right now. But um, I think... We got ours a couple years ago or something like that. Uh, I think there may be new ones out. They probably come out with new these things every year, but it's like, how much better can they possibly get? Um, regarding iPod with a built-in camera, um, so chances are it would be taking pictures, not necessarily um, being able to do conference calls, but who knows that the, with the um, the new goggle technology, uh, they can like kind of, how can I say, scan your face and you can talk to people that way. So I don't know, iPods with cameras, who knows? Uh, and also to new health technologies like non-invasive blood sugar monitoring. It's kind of funny that they mentioned this one because um, there was a, a company that sued Apple. It was like, um, I think it was like patent violation because uh, they said, hey, your watch steals our <laughs> blood sugar stuff. So it's kind of funny that they mentioned that in, in the article. Again, um, you know, what else? where else can Apple go? Uh, this also says too that Apple's working on artificial intelligence to you know get into chatbots and other stuff like that. Uh, moreover, what else we got here? It says... Um, uh, Amazon's uh, Astro thing, that was 2021, that's $1,600, okay. So that's why people didn't really get it, it's just too much. And then also too, they're talking about here, the original concept for the robot was a device that could navigate entirely on its own without human intervention, right? So we talked about this, like the car and serve as a video conferencing tool. Uh, one pie in the sky idea within Apple was having it be uh, able to handle chores, uh, like cleaning dishes in the sink. So. Yeah, that's a pie in the sky. That they're pretty far away from something like that. Um, but that would require over, uh, you know, I mean, this isn't here. That would require overcoming extraordinary, difficult engineering challenges. Something that's unlikely this decade. I would agree. And then this is, I guess, their description of the jobs at Apple for this product in terms of robots. It says, "quote 
Our team works at the intersection of modern machine learning and robotics to shape the AI that will uh, power the next generation of Apple products. And then it also says, we are looking for innovative and hardworking ML, so that'd be machine learning, and robotics researchers and engineers that help us research, define, and develop complex intelligent robotic systems and experiences in the real world. So they are hiring, and uh, we'll see, in fact, uh, if they do release a product. I share my thoughts on this stuff. I'd like to hear your thoughts as well. Um, is there a future in home robotics for Apple? Uh, always appreciate your time, and uh, I'll catch you next video.